welcome to the NBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. An old guy trying to make sense of the modern world? How is it I identify so with this upcoming episode? Uh, not sure, man, but I feel the same way too. It's, it feels like that we're out of time. We're, we're trying to mingle with the cool kids. Like, they, they say shui right now, right? Shui? I, why, I why have no we idea. Why talk about water? No, no it's not, that's not what the cool kids are saying now. Uh, apparently not, Norman. I think you're confusing us with Batman Beyond. <laughs> you got the reference. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I, I was going to say, it's like, I actually took Chinese. I know what Shui is, and that's water. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, also joining us is Severe Heart Song. I can't right now, Norman. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 you, you already mind boggled me enough to where I have nothing to say. Well, that's just wiggity whack. Yeah, you're oh, definitely not with no, no. <laughs> Why oh, do you hate don't me? Be, don't be hating fire. <laughs> yeah. Why do you hate me? <laughs> uh, Why did we you love you? We hurt you because we love you. <laughs> Why does that make well, any well, sense? I Actually I just love to see you in pain. <laughs> you know, that's, that's my thing. Someone, someone call Child Protective Services. <laughs> Zappy, here's your thing. You're, you're not under 18 anymore. You're an adult. Oh, right. <laughs> that means learning to, that means learning to put up with people you hate. Indeedy. <laughs> and also, oh, no, no, bad segue. No, anyway, also joining us today is Torterra. I'm still trying to fit into the world, but I'm not part of this pony universe unless I'm going to put my pony OC. So put him in. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> all right, all right. Then. So in today's episode review, we are going to do season eight, episode twenty-one, "A Rock Hoof and a Hard Place." In this episode, when Rock Hoof, one of the pillars of Requester, has trouble fitting into the modern world. Twilight Sparkle and her friends try to help him find a new purpose. So, let's go to First Impressions. And Silver, what do you think? I enjoyed this episode. I knew it was going to be about Rock Hoof just by the spoil by little teasers. But it, I was very pleasantly surprised when it turned out that it was a checkup on all of the pillars. Except for Star Swirl, who gets to appear to... Well, in FU. He, he gets, <laughs> I still get to say it! He, he gets his own episode. Let, let's yeah. just say that. Yeah, but no, uh, the the only uh, mishap is Stygian. Like we didn't really get to see Stygian, but we get to find out what he's been doing, and he got a very prominent role in uh, Nightmare Nights, which I enjoy. Yeah, there, there, but so, but the downfall about the com- oh, sorry, not downfall, but the negative about the comics is it could be non-canon until it's stated otherwise. But still, it was much fun. It was fun. Yeah, it could be. But, hey, I enjoy a story. And this was a fun story. There are some moments where you're kind of a head-scratcher, but then it gets dark. So dark. I'm just like, wow, they went there. Yeah. They really went there. It's Chekhov's gun. Like, they brought it up, and they might use it. But anyway, those are my first impressions. True, true, true. true. And also, Sappy, what do you think? Yeah, I'm with Silver. This episode got dark. Like, this is... I did enjoy seeing all the pillars again, though, other than, you know, obviously, Stygian and, uh, what's Star his Soul? name? Star Soul. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm not exactly awake myself, even though I should be. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm there, but my brain isn't. Uh, uh, it's cool, it's cool. I don't really remember. I do love Yona in this. Yona is kind of the best here. All right, then. For reasons I can't go into now, but you'll find out later. <laughs> Yaki's best character! Yeah. Yay! So, okay. And Tara, what about you? I really liked it. I mean, I don't remember it being uh, dark, the way Silver and Saf- Safi mention it. But How maybe did it'll... <laughs> How did you not pick up on the dark elements? Yeah, because I'm a kind, generous person. True. Well, well, hopefully we'll remind you of why that is later on during this review, because it gets dark, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it'll come back to me. Yeah. Wait, we're reviewing dark, we're reviewing dark, man? Oh no, not that one. Give me the pink but elephant. The what now? Uh, you're too young to understand. <laughs> it's like, pink, 
pink element. <clears throat> Give me the pink elephant. I'm done. Uh, old people joke. Get it? <laughs> Nobody's gonna get nope. it. I don't get it. <laughs> uh, I, I, I can't even with these kids today. I, I just I don't even. I know. But anywho, as for me, this episode was a lot of fun. I like the interaction between uh, Rockhoof and everyone. Like, he is the literal definition of fish out of water. And I do like it. Like, th- this episode uses that trope and uses it well. I, I am going to say this, though. Rockhoof has become my second favorite pillar in all of these. Yeah, we, we, we mentioned that before, even in the comics. Like, the comics really wrote him well. And yeah, like... Rockhoof was always that big brother that you want. And looking in this episode here, like, he's trying his best. Like, he is really trying his best. But anywho, um, let's hold that for the end when we have our conclusion. And let's just head right into the review. If you have not watched this, pause this here. Welcome back. So, we start off the episode with uh, a pan shot of Rockhoof's hometown or village or whatever you want to call it. And it seems that the archaeologists are digging. And yay, Rockhoof is there too, to help. And uh, Professor Fossil here says, uh, Rockhoof, please no, don't help. Just go away. Go away. Go, go away. And yeah, it seems that Rockhoof here really can adapt. Because to him, this is his home. To the rest, it's just, what you call this, history. So it's kind of strange. Like, yeah, re- really strange. So, Professor Fossil here goes to Princess Twilight and says, Twilight, take Rockhoof. I don't want him here, please. Okay, good. Yay, much awesomeness. Now he's your problem. Which means she's really bad at her job. Oh, how so? I, I, you have an actual first-hand account, or first hoof account, of life in this uh in this time period that you're studying and because he's mildly inconvenient i.e he wants to still live in his old home uh she's like oh no i can't even deal with this it is an interesting combo of perspectives that for Rockhoof, this was just a few weeks ago and his home was you know just his home imagine for a moment trying to walk through your home and treat everything as if it's going to be preserved for future generations you wouldn't touch anything that makes sense. And this reminds me of Mass Effect 3, where um, Liara to Sony, the blue alien chick. What was those um, race called? I forgot. But she discovered a protean. And it's the same principle here. But uh, the thing is, Liara is a scientist, while the protean is a warrior. It's similar to this kind of scenario. And whatever Liara tried to ask about science and whatnot... He couldn't answer because he is a soldier of sorts. And it was kind of frustrating for them. But the story was really awesome, by the way. So yeah, that reminds me of that kind of situation outside of ponies. So anywho... Well, actually, can I just say something? <coughs> oh, yeah, go ahead. That whole thing about uh, not being touched by future generations, I can personally agree with that because my region hasn't been touched by future generations unless it gets a remake. Huh? You get it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get it, but it, it was still a bad joke. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you're, I just have to go phrasing. Boom. <laughs> oh, boys. Yeah, yeah, but still. But anywho, as we carry on, Princess Twilight introduces the new faculty member to the school, and it is Professor Rockhoof. Yay, yay, Professor Rockhoof has a rocky start. <laughs> yeah, get it? Shocker. Yeah, get it? Rock, Rockhoof, Rocky. <laughs> yeah. Once again, shocker. So, everybody seems to like him. He, he has a nice personality. A bit awkward, but he's still cool. And he takes up the class of theory and defense of friendship. And yeah, he, he seems lively. He seems like the lively teacher that you will enjoy in the future somehow. Rockhoof here enters the class, introduces himself, and tells that he still hasn't read Twilight's note on the class. And Gallus says like, oh yeah, uh, we tell stories. Yeah, uh, stories and no homework. Definitely no homework. And Rockhoof agrees because the only way to teach a filly, a colon filly, is through experience and he tells the story of how he defeated the Ursa Major. Really 
tail gripping story, really. You say that we're not interested in that kind of story. <laughs> well, I, I, actually, I'm saving that for later. All right. Oh. So, anywho. Because the, 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 the trap of continuity will uh, will rear its ugly head. Oh, that's not good. But, anywho, while Rock Hoof is telling his story, Twilight and Applejack walks through the hall, saying that, hey, Twilight, I think you did a great job. Like, this is the fastest friendship problem you have ever solved. You're great. Spoke too soon because there's a crash here, a bang there, and it seems that Rock Hoof's storytelling is way into it. Like, he is way into the storytelling he has to do dramatics with his shovel. And, yay! Um, yo, sorry, the students are really into the story and Yona is way into Rock Hoof. Way into Rock Hoof. Oh yeah, she's a fangirl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the middle of the story, um, Twilight just calls Rock Hoof to have a little chat and says that, um, I, I think your method of teaching is a bit too hands on on and I don't think we have insurance for that. And Rocco goes, "What are hands or oh, hooves?" <laughs> the the right question to ask Silver is insurance. What's that? <laughs> it's well to quote uh, Discworld. It's a bet. <laughs> really? Now I'm just trying to think. A bet, really? Yes. Uh, one of the characters introduces the concept of insurance to a tavern owner who promptly proceeds to light his bar on fire to get the insurance. <laughs> so, which in turn burns down half the city. Oh, okay. <laughs> what was the bet then? <laughs> the bet was, how how safe is your bar? Turns out, not very. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, then. But anywho. Oh, talking about fires, it seems that there's a fire in Twilight School. Oh no, we need a hero to put it out. And it seems that we have I one. Need a hero. <laughs> yeah, we have one. And it seems that Rock Hoof's years of experience with volcanoes prepared him for this uh, situation. He burst through walls. Oh yeah! Uh, Save the students by throwing them away with a shovel. Woohoo! And Yona looks totally happy and satisfied with this development. She's like, Yona Senpai notice her. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Me. Oh, boy. Oh, Yona super kawaii desu. Oh, my God. No. No, not this again. <laughs> <laughs> but, eh. Hey, ikimasu. <laughs> this, this Do you thing. even know what you're saying? Nani. <laughs> <laughs> but, anywho, um... I'll Rock, take that as a no. Rock Hoof smashes the fountain and drowses the fire with the water that's coming from the fountain. And Rarity comes out and just complains. Who 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 the hell rain on my parade? And, Literally. Yeah. And Spike and uh, Smolder here comes out and says, um, what, what happened? Like, what literally just happened? And... Rock Hoof here says, no problem, kids. I just saved your life from a fire. A really, really bad fire. And Twilight... Sorry, and Smolder and Spike just says, fire? What fire? That was us. We were fire-breathing things. Like, we were doing a contest. And Twilight says, we were trying to tell you about this. And yeah, you, you were too gung-ho. And that really put him down. Like, his emotion is really down. Well... Oh. Why, why are they holding a fire-breathing contest in the school? That's just asking for trouble. Silver, silver. That's, prov that's proving they say right. Yeah, silver is for the insurance. <laughs> oh, God. The Twilight... Great. The, the tree harmony made this school and turns out it's just an insurance scam by Twilight. <laughs> yeah. This is how they don't charge tuition. They just try and scam the, the insurance company. Anyway, sorry, Torterra. What were you going to say? Well, I was going to say, too, that uh, Twilight says that, oh, I was trying to tell you. It didn't look like you were trying to put so much effort into even stopping him or going, getting his way and be like, Rock Hoof, wait, it's just a fire-breathing competition. It's like, you weren't even trying. You wanted him to destroy <laughs> no, your fountain and put out the fire. No, he's like, no, Rock Hoof, wait, no, no. 
Don't. No, don't. stop. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, poor. So, anywho, uh, the main six plus Spike holds a meeting um, discussing what can Rockhoof do besides teachers teach at the school. And uh, they did a few things like uh, Applejack saying um, something to do with the post office, delivering letters. Uh, that didn't work out. Rarity tried to do him a favor by making him work at the spa. That didn't work. Um, poor Bulk with his broken spine. And with Zakura too. Like, Zakura asked for leaves, but Rockhoof thinks about, hey, maybe if she wants to leave, I can just give you the tree. And that causes Beast to come out. And nah, that, that's not gonna work. And so on. So, um, the rest decided, hey, why, what about the other pillars? They seem to be doing well. So, why not we just... Uh, introduce Rockhoof to them and see if they could help Rockhoof out. Like, maybe that could work, right? And so they do. The first place they go to is Cantalort with Flash Magnus. And it seems that Flash is adapting really, really well. And it seems that, like, he is the drill sergeant for the recruit for the Royal Guards. Yay. Which means, might he train Flash Sentry? Probably, I don't know. Could be. Well, I mean, they're both yellow. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of thinking. Oh wow, I was. My parents named me after you. <clears throat> That'd be something to hear. Oh boy. So, or this could be a plot twist, and maybe Flash Magnus could be a uh, long ancestor of a uh, Flash Century. So, so, whose waifu did you steal? <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> but anywho, um. When they introduce Flash says like yeah after I got freed from the uh, mission whatever it is that we did last time uh, I went to Princess Celestia and Celestia gave me this high positioning rank like, yeah I'm just doing whatever I was doing again really cool yeah and Rockhoof is like oh man this is not cool that's not cool so they decided to go to Miss Main because Flash said she's doing well and yeah they go to the Crystal Empire and it seems that Miss Main is doing a lot of crystal flower thing. Yay! Much awesomeness, I guess. And Once again, best best pillar. Yeah. For a good Although answer. I gotta, I gotta ask though, why is she not like back at her family's garden? Did she take one look and say, "Yeah, you guys messed this up, Royal. I'm out." Probably, but I think it could be a challenge for her because, oh, working with organic is lame. Let me work with rocks. Yay! But anywho, uh, as we carry on, Miss Main says, why not you go to Sonambula? She's doing something new. Like, she's doing something that has not existed before. And they go to Sonambula to see Sonambula. Aha, get it? But anywho, Sonambula is a motivational speaker. She talks to the ponies, telling them to relax, telling them to, you know, um, let go and do the impossible, see the invisible, row, row, fight the power. And with all that, it seems that Rockhoof is too relaxed and couldn't really do the meditation thing. So anywho, they shift off to see Meadowbrooks. And Meadowbrook is back home doing her thing, which is selling potions and medicines to the ponies and creatures who need it. And yeah, Rockhoof is impressed and kind of sad and bummed about not being able to go home. And Applejack says, oh, you know what, Sugar Cube, you don't have to worry. I I bet, like, Star Swirl and Stygian are adapting, too. And Twilight comes in with a book. And he's and then Twilight just says, yo, guys, look, it's T- Stygian. He wrote a book, and it's the third bestseller. Wait, Yay! wait a minute, wait a minute. Norman. Yes? You're, you're like, you're, you're saying, you're trying to voice in, like, Applejack, like, saying, like, oh... They're they're adapting just fine. They're doing fine. That should make you feel better, right? That's not what happened. <laughs> I'm just your your perpetual failures compared to your uh, are only worse compared to your peers. <laughs> but it's okay, Sugar Cube. <laughs> also, do you think Applejack's feeling at all weird that like this was her idol <laughs> at one point? Yeah, her favorite story ever, Apple Bloom. Yeah, that's... and now she's having to counsel him. She's like, <laughs> What, what is my life, y'all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true that, true that. So, anywho, this really depresses Rockhoof, and Rockhoof kind of, you know, 
feels down and the rest of the ponies try and figure out something like what could they do and Twilight has a brilliant idea to try and send him to the Royal uh, Hippogriff Navy outsourcing yeah it seems to work a bit and Applejack just have to say yo sugar cube like ain't these hippogriffs know how to do the whatchamacallit the sea pony thing and so on Oh, Dizam. Can I just say something, though? I never knew Applejack talked like that, being like, yo, sugar cube. <laughs> I'm just trying Same. to summarize stuff. Like, if I go on with the way I used to do, we're going to be here for a while. Uh, let me be. Let me alone. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey. <No. laughs> so, hey, who? As they sail, a thick fog comes in. And the hippogriff says, oh no, we can't see anything. Let's wait it out. Let's wait it out. Rockhoff says, oh no, we can do what we really do before, back in the days where we can just navigate via the constellations. And the hippogriff says, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's go. Let's let's try. They do. And they ram their boat into a rock. And wow, Twilight just realized, oh wait, it's been what, almost a thousand years or more? since Roku was here and yeah the whole world just moved left oh wow the whole world turned left we 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 the became the anti zoolander <laughs> look i turned left <laughs> no they're making another left turn <laughs> i'm just remembering we... space ball remember where are they where are they i'm just thinking nascar right now <laughs> everybody just keeps turning to the left <laughs> And turning to the left. Did we did, did that joke last left. week when we were recording? Yeah, I think we I did. I don't know, and I don't care. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so, anywho, Rocco feels dejected because of the NASCAR joke, but um, also he feels like a failure. And he decided that, you know what, I am not right for this world, and tells Twilight to turn him into a stone like Discord. And Twilight says, What? No! They argue. And this is where the darker elements come into play. Yeah, this is where we get all super dark and... <sighs> but anywho, um, they argue for a bit. And Rocco says, it's because of you that I'm in this world now. So you have to make it right. And turn me wow, to stone. That's a that's a hell of a guilt trip. Yeah, I mean, I'm just summarizing here. I mean, it, it was longer and better. But like, summarize, that's the point. Well, no, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing, but good gravy, he really hit her with the one-two combo on that. Yep, ain't cool. But the thing is, like, Twilight doesn't really want to do this because it's not right. It's, it, this is not right. This is not how you should solve this problem. You're running away from it. No, that's bad. And Twilight says to Spike, "Take over my class. I need to think of something before this goes overboard. Like, I really need to think of something." And the class here are all excited for Rockhoof because. He is a great teacher. He is very exciting. He he is just the best. He that like he's literally the best. And Spike comes in saying that yeah, guys, Twilight says I'm taking over the class and whatnot, and he's going to turn Rockhoof into stone. So yeah, whatever, just do a report on heroes. Yeah, go go do go do. What Yona losing senpai? No, come back senpai. Yona Aishteru. <laughs> oh no, but oh, anywho. For sake. <laughs> Actually, now that you put it that way, if you think about it in real life, it's like saying someone that's well known in the fandom leaves the fandom, and then one of the fanboys or girls would be like, "No, don't leave." No, don't leave. Makes sense. I, I can just imagine it already. Oh no, don't leave ex pony person who is really popular now. Oh no, oh look, the new flavor comes in. Oh yeah, let's go with that one now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fair. Fans are so fickle. Yeah. My my life in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> so anywho, Rockhoof is deciding on a pose to well stick forever and not be what you call this um be pigeon toilet, yeah. So five bucks says he sneezes. <laughs> so anywho, um, while he's deciding that, Yona comes in saying that you can't turn to stone. I love you. I mean, I like. You. I mean, you're the best. And <laughs> Yoda Senpai noticed you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Brockhoof says, like, nah, man, like, I'm a relic of this world and nobody really likes me and stuff. 
And Yona says, well, if you're not going to stay, here's a stupid story I wrote about class about you because stuff. And it's a really heart-touching and adorable story. And yeah, with that, Rocco says, you know what? Since you told that amazing story, I might as well finish the bear story. And Yona says, oh, cool, because I invited friends. <laughs> She's got a little trowel just to mimic her, her hero. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's so, so cute. cute. <laughs> yeah. So um, while Rocco is outside telling the story, uh, Twilight here just says, ah, okay, Rocco, I don't want to do this, but let's get on with it. And oh, you're outside. You're interacting with the world. That's good. Uh, you're telling stories. Yay, that's good. You're, you're really awesome. You're really awesome. So, Rocco tells the story of how he defeated the Ursa Major. And long story short, uh, he flipped the bear up to the stars, making it a constellation. Yays. Which is where my continuity uh, trap springs. Oh no, you activated his trap card. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> What a shame, you activated my Alucard. Oh no! What? <laughs> <laughs> Spell Alucard backwards. But, I dare you. It, you know it's just tracking. I know what it is. <laughs> Alright, but anyway. But, you think uh, okay. Remember that the very, very start of this series, uh, Nightmare Moon would be released because the stars aid in her escape. Mm-hmm. Now we find out that the stars are, are at least one constellation is a freaking Ursa Major that Rocco flipped. <laughs> so I have this image of Nightmare Moon emerging from her uh, prison. And the first thing she sees is an Ursa Major roaring in her face. No wonder she's so pissed off. I'd be the same. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boys. But no, um, I, I think the aiding of the escape... Okay, here is a bit of a uh, kind of weird story to tell because it has to do with the comics. Because the stars, it could be chaos... Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Who's Chaos? Chaos one- oh, uh, there's Cosmos. Oh, Cosmos, not Chaos. Uh, oh. Cosmos is the antagonist of the Kurtz, uh story. Wow. That, that's unfolding right now, and we'll review w- in good time when it's when it's complete. Well, oh, we can catch up to it. <laughs> Either or. But I just, I love the image of Nightmare Moon just screaming in terror as an Ursa Major greet, greets her on her release. Like, welcome back! <laughs> there we are. But anywho, uh, Twilight says, Rocco, you're awesome. You're a good storyteller. Me, as Princess of Friendship, declares you as a keeper of tales. You will tell stories till the day you die. Watch awesomeness. What if I want a career change? Till the day you die. <laughs> And, yeah, now Rockwell has a new story about a young yak, dragons, hippogriffs, a lot of hippogriffs, and a griffin, and ponies. There's a lot of ponies, too. And the tale starts with when Rockwell was at his hometown. <laughs> and episode ends. Let's not repeat the cycle. <laughs> so, uh, let's go into final thoughts. So, Silver, what do you think, man? Well, Rockwell represents something that is not often remarked upon, but... When people t- go on about the hero's journey, how many people focus on the return? It's the element of the story where the hero, having experienced this other world or gone on this transformative journey, comes back and has to and is now master of two worlds. But the return is not always uh, easy or clean. I can name you three that prove this. There was Rip Van Winkle, fell asleep under a tree, comes back, after like 90 years, he's an elderly man. And suddenly he is uh, surrounded by people it, who resent the king he once uh, celebrated and worshipped oh. as a loyal Briton. You know, he fell asleep before the American Revolution and came back after. So that led to a very awkward uh, bar scene, okay. if nothing else. Then there's Urashima Taro. Saves the underground, uh, or no, sorry, the underwater kingdom from a sea scorpion. But when he returns, he finds that he's already become an elderly man. Uh, the passage of time was very different, and he's missed out on most of his life. And then in the Celtic legend of Tirnanog, there's Oisin, who uh, he falls in love with uh, a woman of the other world, 
but he has to return home to see to the death, the funeral of a family member. And she, and his love cautions him. If you touch the ground, if you get off this magical horse, who I have named Twilight, <laughs> uh, you will not be able to return. And wouldn't you know it, he done goofs. Why? He accidentally touches the ground and the horse disappears. And he instantly becomes old and dies of old age. Ooh, that's not a good way to add. <laughs> and I mean, that that's kind of the thing. You think, oh, I'll return in triumph and I'll be this great hero. Nope. Sometimes the return is really hard for the hero and really painful. Mm -hmm. And it's a struggle just to understand what am I supposed to do now? No, no. One more to add to the list. Oh, who? Uh, Steve Rogers from uh, Marvel's Captain America. There you go. He really had to struggle and in some ways remind people, hey, maybe you need a little old school in your life. Yeah, and also, like, evil comes in many shapes. Language! <laughs> a little old school? It sound, sounds like a bad pickup line. Hey, baby, you want a little old school in your life? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I already feel very uncomfortable. Oh, another one. Samurai so Jack. <laughs> ba ba da ba 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 well, that is the that is the hard thing. He's got to he's got to live with the fact that the entire world he witnessed, he, as horrible as it could be, he used to say, "The only way I'll see my family is in my memories." Well, now it's the only way I'll see the Scotsman and Ashi and that whole world is in my memories. So, I thought I'd just bum the heck out of everybody with this observation. Yeah, it's, thanks a lot, Silver. My pleasure. <laughs> Tartara, give yes. me a vial of your tears. I wish to add it to a fine wine. <laughs> this, there you go. There you go. At, give me a little lip quiver. Uh, what? Come on. It's not true tears unless your lip is trembling. Oh, I can't do that. <laughs> ah, we'll work on that. So, anywho, is that all simple? I think that's... Well, okay. I really just enjoy this i enjoy the interactions with the students i enjoy rock Hoof, and i enjoy the unintentional humor of implying an ursa major let nightmare moon out <laughs> yeah 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 all right then fan artists get on that <laughs> oh boy and seppi what about you I, i'm pretty much in the same boat i like this episode i i am still kind of shook by the suicide implications it's not suicide when you know you can come back well the implication is there that he w doesn't want to come back. But he can still listen to the people while he's turned to stone. Yeah, like Discord did. Though, uh, what, what is it? She turned me to stone. To stone? I got better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, boys. I, I really don't have much to say, honestly. <laughs> cool. anyway. I mean, it's not like he was going to get stoned. Yeah. Anyway, uh. Well, that would have been a better option now, wouldn't it, Vit Torterra? <laughs> hey, I just because I have a giant tree on my back does not mean I could supply that kind of stuff. Have you tried? No. <laughs> I wasn't That's... even implying that, but thank you for the reminder <laughs> that you can't produce pot. <laughs> I don't know. I I feel the need to explore this idea further. Oh, boy. So, anywho, Tara, what about you? What, what do you think about this episode? I, I really enjoyed it throughout, from the beginning to the end. I really enjoyed the comedy from Rockhoof, and it even has the sad moments we feel bad for him, but at least he had a happy ending in the end. Oh, yeah, that's true, that's true, that's true. Sort of, sort of. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, he does, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I'm thinking they get turned to stone. <laughs> oh, you and your stones. Okay, well, that's a different kind of ending. That's the dark ending. Yeah. But anyways, for me, this episode was a lot of fun. Uh, Rockhoof here was awesome, because, like I mentioned before, second best, and the little things he do and does, like, he's not being malicious or mean. He's just doing the right thing. But in this day and age, the right thing may not be the best thing. And he's just really a beat. Like, you, you feel for the guy. You, you want him to succeed. You really feel for his struggles, his successes and whatnot. And the hippogriff thing was the best option. It's just that Twilight didn't really told him about the shifting of the planets. Uh, Wait a minute. Why why not make Rock of part of the Apple family? Give him a job. No. <laughs> he, he destroyed the farm in five yeah, minutes. Yeah, could you did you see him pick up that tree for Zakura? Yeah, he could just shake off all the <laughs> apples off the tree. He's too strong. Of him. 
<laughs> you, you never know. You could have given the guy a chance, but no. Well, actually, throughout the whole episode, I thought that his final job, instead of being a storyteller, I thought he was going to be like a fire pony. Fire pony? What do you mean by that? Like taking out fires like a fireman. Oh, uh, that makes sense, yeah. Because he's dealt with fire before, and you saw him take out the fire at the school, and, you know, it could have clicked into Twilight's head. He'd be like, hmm, that gives me an idea. And then all of a sudden, hey, he, we got a new person. He's really great for taking out fires, as long as you got a fountain for him to break. <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's true. I mean, that, that's one way to look at it. But still, to me, like, the best option was him trying to become a sailor, and that didn't really pan out, because like I mentioned before, Twilight didn't really update him on the stars positioning why not but still it was a good try it was a good try but the story here is one of those things where experiences speak a lot but sometimes without the right kind of experience it's not really that great i will admit i'm a little surprised that prince no one thought to say hey princess luna you went through adjusting to this here modern world any tips for rockoff play video games play a lot of video games have a holiday named after you and wait for everyone to uh Worship yes, you. Yes, yes. Very much. Yeah. Happy St. Rockcroft's Day. No. <laughs> you're not okay with doing this. <laughs> you're not, you're not make Senpai best day and then Senpai notice her. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Yeah, like, why, why didn't Luna help? I mean, I, I'm, I bet Luna has an extra console lying around for him to play, an extra PC to play Overwatch or something like that. Yeah, Rockcroft can play Reinhardt. He works well. No? No? Just me? No. Uh, no. I, sorry, dude. Apex is the big thing oh, right now. Oh, no. Oh, no. Not Apex. Oh, no. Oh, you got something against Apex? Series. <laughs> I do. It's made by EA. What do you have against Apex? It's made by EA. No, it's not. Yes. Well, okay, it's not. It's made by uh, Revive. No. Revive. No, what was it again? No. So, so you refuse to play a thing because it's made by a company that's not even made by. But they own Nor- it. Norman, your your they logic is twisted. No, it was made by Respawn Entertainment. Yeah. Norman, come on. But it's published by EA. So. Yeah, EA's evil. Okay. Pom 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 pom. Yep. So anywho, that's besides the point. That's video game talk when we do the NBA show video games. So, uh, talking about video games, Silver, what are you going to do next week? We're going to have a little blast from the past and we're going to talk about something I think that is near and dear to Torterra's heart. Ahem. Or Shell. Ahem. Or Saf- or we'll try to help Safi get that thing out of her throat. Oh, I hate you now. <laughs> I mean, I think you just need to cough, Safi. I, I hate you right now so much. <laughs> not not oh, even shit. joking. I I don't expect you to be joking about it. <laughs> mm, your hatred is delicious. <laughs> but we're going to be talking about Pokemon, the third movie, Spell of the Unknown. Ooh. Which is apparently near and dear to Safi as well. Thank you. Yay. There we go. So, yes. Harmony is restored. Sorry? Now, Torterra, before we do this, we need to find out if that shell can make with the good stuff. It cannot. I already tried. Oh God. Uh, well, try harder. But anyway, yes. Next week, we'll be doing the Pokemans, and that is also a Patreon sponsor by myself. Like, it's a redo. Like, we did this before, but it didn't pan out because derps. So, yeah, let's hope this time around we don't derp that hard. Yes. So, anywho, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at theambitionsgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at Inbase Show. And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, they can find me on the Twitters under MLP Silver Quill. You can find me on the same under Deviant Arts. On YouTube, if you do a search for Silver Quill or After the Fact, you shall find me. And every Wednesday, I am posting either a comic review or editorial for the IDW Comics. Awesome. Awesome. Also, yeah, the, those um, reviews are really awesome. Uh, reminds people that, hey, comics out and go check it out. And also, Sappy, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me anywhere from YouTube to DeviantArt to Twitter under the name Anne May Christie. Also, if you're coming to BabsCon, I'll be at Table H5 under Bright Crystal Studios. If Please, please come. I, I need money. Thank you. 
<laughs> all righty then, all righty then. And also, Terra Weekend, they good people find you. Well, the people can find me on their Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Torterra1324. Or they can also donate some money to me on Patreon. Cool, 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 cool. And also, please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube, and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also, Stitcher Radio, and also like on our Facebook page. You can also get us on PonyForLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Jeffrey, and also Master of Light. Thank you so much, guys. You're great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I'm Zeus for Creed. I'm Ben I am Twitter1324. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Rock of Senpai Notice Yona! Sticky! Well, that just ruins my vibe. Really now? Yes. <laughs> now leave my tree alone! No.